I'm Chan Storland, and welcome to the Marmot's Hole podcast, brought to you each week by KoreaFM.net, an online radio station featuring independent musicians and original podcast content from the Korean Peninsula. Of course, I'm joined each episode by Robert Kohler, the man behind the Marmot's Hole blog that was in operation here for years. You can still find his website, rjkohler.com. Today, we're moving away from our two weeks straight of reporting on tensions here on the Korean Peninsula to a conversation about free speech and defamation laws right here in South Korea. But first, Rob, uh, it's been a little bit of time since we spoke. How have you been? And I hope you've been getting outside, taking some pictures. It's been really nice weather the last couple of days, though it did rain a bit over the weekend. It's funny you should uh, say that because uh, on Saturday night, um, on, on a bit of a lark, um, I, I took the night bus to Kyungju um, because it was raining, and I was kind of hoping to take a uh, there's a uh, a forest, a pine forest down in Kyungju that's uh, quite uh, quite lovely when it's foggy. Um, some uh, a lot of photographers go down there, um, and uh, so I thought, oh, it's going to be. Uh, I'd been there once before, but there was no fog, so I thought, oh, maybe this will be a uh, a uh, good time to go. So I went down there and, uh, you know, as the bus was going down, I saw fog everywhere. And I'm like, oh, this is, you know, I've hit the jackpot here. I think I know where this story is going. <laughs> I think pretty, pretty much judging from a lot of the photographs that I saw taken uh, on Sunday, um, I think the forest was the only place in Korea that did not actually have fog. Um, so, yeah, another another wasted trip down to Kyungju. I mean, it was, you know, it's a lovely forest, um, you know, even without the, without the fog. Um, well, knowing you, Rob, I, I'm sure there are plenty of places you've been multiple times to shoot, so I'm sure you'll be back. Hopefully you can get some fog on the next trip. Well, well landscape photography, that's how it works, right? Is, um, you know, you have to keep going and going. And even when you get lucky and you, you do get a good day, um, you know, you go on another good day and you get something completely different. So it's uh, the beauty of it, you know. Places look different, uh, you know, for yeah, each and every day, you know, the same place looks different. So, yeah, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a complete waste. Well, not a complete waste, so always the optimist. And it'll be interesting to see. I, one of the questions I have about this topic after I give the, um, the full explanation that I'm about to start here is kind of about whether or not the current situation in South Korea regarding defamation and, um, you know, what some people, probably a lot of people would call the limiting of free speech, whether or not there is perhaps a bright side to that. So we'll get to that in a moment. But um, we're talking about this because there's a nice piece that just got put out by the New York Times called South Korea government accused of using defamation laws to silence critics. And the piece begins by talking about, of course, you know, Something that we're going to be hearing about a lot here as the two-year anniversary is coming up, 304 people that died um, during the Seawall sinking. And um, basically, after that event in late 2014, the Times says that a leaflet kind of began circulating that uh, had a rumor that President Park Geun-hye had failed to respond swiftly to the disaster that day because she was having a romantic encounter with a former aide. This also uh, came up, of course, with the uh, Shanghai Shinbun criminal defamation charges that ended with an acquittal. And uh, the flyer went on to ask if the president was now cracking down on her critics in an attempt to keep that scandal from coming to light. The anti-government campaigner who was behind that was then soon arrested, later sentenced to a year in prison on charges of defaming the president and also staging a legal protest against his prosecutors. And uh, he was also eventually then freed in December of last year after being in custody for about eight months. Now, that in itself is not news because that's been covered before. And once again, he was let go in December. But the Times writes that while no evidence supporting the rumor has been produced, and no matter how dubious the leaflet might have been, opponents of the government say that Mr. Park became yet another victim of the very thing he was denouncing, the government's use of defamation and other laws to silence its critics, which rights advocates say is on the rise. Just last year, in fact, the United Nations Human Rights Committee warned against South Korea's, quote, increasing use of criminal defamation laws to prosecute persons who criticize government action. And Freedom House, which is um, one of the two major groups that uh, kind of judges press freedom around the world, said that, quote, increased intimidation of political opponents is underway here with the current President Park administration. Now, it's interesting because like so many things here in South Korea, there are actually laws that 
protect the freedom of expression. This is from the South Korean Constitution. But defamation laws here carry penalties as well, and that could include prison, up to three years for comments that are true, and up to seven years for comments that are considered false if they are deemed not in the public interest. Critics say the distinction is vague and opens the door to abuse by prosecutors. And it's, of course, important to note that the South Korean government's use of these laws against critics is not something that's just happening right now. It predates the current presidency, but the trend has increased considerably under President Park and the influential South Korean civic group People's Solidarity for Participatory Democracy says that the Park administration doesn't seem to even care whether or not they actually win the cases that they pursue because the real purpose is just to create a chilling effect among people criticizing and scrutinizing the government. And of course, You know, as I'm sure you'll mention, we have the very recent passing of South Korea's long stalled anti-terrorism bill, which, among other things, creates an anti-terrorism center under the prime minister's office. But the National Intelligence Service will also have the power to gather the information that is now legal to collect. So. As I mentioned, perhaps uh, later down the line, we'll talk about if there's any positive side to this. But what do you think about this New York Times article in general, Rob? I remember seeing it on my Facebook feed, and the comment that I made when I posted it was actually something that I saw echoed by a lot of the other people I saw that are posting it, which is basically, of course. I mean, this is happening. This is this is obvious. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's something that's been talked about for, for, for a long time. Um yeah, in, in in Korea, um we do have a criminal defamation law which, you know, if you run afoul of it could land you uh up to 3 years in prison or uh and or a uh, a 20 million won fine, which is, you know, no joke. That's about what about 20,000 US. A little less than that, but you could just generally think of it as 20,000. Right. And as the Constitutional Court um, ruled last month, um, the the truth will not necessarily uh, set you free. Um, it probably it, it, we, we should probably discuss um, the nature of the defamation law, um, what it is and uh and, and and take a look at because actually I, I took a look at the New York Times mentioned it briefly about the uh the uh the the constitutional court decision but it was actually it was actually quite interesting um the defamation law in Korea basically states that if you go out in public and and state a fact or a not you know or in the case of uh something that didn't happen a non fact but if you go out and and, and state a fact um with the intention of harming somebody's reputation, you can be found criminal li- criminally liable for that. Because it has to be in the public good. Right. So, and, so uh, maybe just like a quick example of this, not perfect, but the way I think about this would be like if a politician or a very powerful, important, rich person here in Korea, if it turns out that they hired a prostitute or, you know, a, a heterosexual man on, uh, you know, at least on paper, hired a gay prostitute. If you announce that to the world and, and let that be known, that might not be in the public interest. And it could be perhaps considered defamation. You're hurting his character. People would not feel the same way about him as they did before. Right. You know, um, you know, something to that effect. Um, to give you an example, in this case, um, with with the uh, the constitutional court uh, case, apparently uh, in 2011, I guess there was a bit of a uh, a fight in an old folks' home out in Kimpo, and uh, somebody posted about it on some internet community, and, and you know this guy this got the guy the the poster uh, not sued but uh, indicted for uh, for criminal defamation. And eventually found its way all the way up to the constitutional court, and in a seven to two decision, um, they ruled that, yeah, that uh, the uh, criminal defamation, even if it's true, because what the guy posted was actually true. What you know, they they investigated and said, yeah, everything that he posted was actually true, but his reason for posting it was not in the public interest. He wasn't there to try to, you know, serve any public good. He was just pissed off and wrote about it on the internet community. And, uh, you know, the court said, you know, that's, you know, that's not how we roll here. Um, and, you know, that's, 
that's criminally liable. So basically this kind of, for me, I always think of like Gawker as something that does a lot of things. And, you know, they, they've, they've actually done quite a few things that you could argue were in the public interest. And, and it's funny, like some of these really sensational sites are starting to be more newsy. They're actually starting to report real stories and hire right. real news staff. But basically, you know, how Gawker got started and what people think about when they think of Gawker probably wouldn't exist here for that specific reason. They couldn't post these email exchanges talking about people doing all these, you know, maybe even legal things, but perhaps, you know, morally questionable in some people's minds. I mean, that just wouldn't fly here. Yeah, I mean, there's some pretty lurid shit in the Korean uh, tabloids, but yeah, running a site like Gawker would be very, very, very difficult. Now, when the Constitutional Court did, when it made its ruling, it said a couple of things. And um, the one thing, and I'm not sure, I don't think the New York Times piece really point, pointed this out, but one of the things, the one of the, the one of the points that the constitutional, well, at least the seven judges who ruled that, you know, even when it's factual, you could still be found, you know, criminally liable for defamation, said that, um, and I know that a lot of expats tend to, you know, uh, mock this, but that Korea is a bit of a special case. Oh yeah, that is a, um, especially in some online communities whenever you see something that um just like oh my gosh i can't believe like that would be allowed or like oh wow that's so interesting that that exists the first you know funny comment people were like would be like please excuse our please understand our special situation exactly. um which just because it's you know just because it, you know it, it you get mocked for it sometimes doesn't necessarily mean it's it's not right all yeah it's not true um in this case what they say is that in Korea, the internet is pretty much universal, um, and you have seen a lot of cases where, you know, malicious comments online will, um, you know, drive people to suicide um, and create a lot of trouble. And because of this, uh, the laws need to be. Um, you know, the laws need to take this you know, special situation into consideration. Another point, and uh, I don't actually think the Constitutional Court made this point, but I have read it elsewhere, is that even though Korea does have a civil, you know, defamation uh, system, so it has a criminal system and, and a civil system side by side, unlike, let's say, the United States, where you have a punitive damage system. Korea doesn't have that. It's not, you know, it's not nearly as well developed. So, I mean, let's say even if you win a, a, a defamation suit against somebody in a, in a, in a uh, civil case, the amount of damages you can expect are it, it's fairly low. In general, I would say the amount of damages that are awarded in Korea for almost anything are probably something that could be called fairly low. I mean, just, just one example, something I didn't agree with and a lot of people didn't agree with, but um, the, the author of um, the book, The Comfort Women of the Empire, I believe that's the title, she lost a defamation lawsuit from a handful of um, comfort women, you know, who have survived uh, to, to very old age. And I believe she was only assessed like a $78,000 fine. Right. Um, so because of the situation and because of, the potential damage that, you know, malicious online commenting or malicious online, you know, postings can lead to. And I mean, I mean, you've read all these, I mean, you read these stories. I mean, you know, yes, in Korea, there, you could argue that, you know, face and reputation is relatively more important than it is, you know, let's say in the West or particularly in the United States. Um, and you can, you've seen, Cases where online bullying, online, you know, just general online nastiness will drive people here to make some, well, it happens also elsewhere too, but, you know, it drives people to make what the constitutional court said, uh, dramatic, uh, you know, extreme decisions. You know, that was the majority of opinion anyway. Um, now there was, a, there were two judges that dissented on this and, you know, they argued that defamation laws here could really you know have a chilling effect on 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 freedom of expression especially when you say things that are actually true 
Plus, they argue that look, you also have the civil, uh, you know, the, you you have the civil system here. Um, there are other ways you can counteract the negative effects of you know malicious postings or malicious speech. You know, you can you know other you know there are other ways to deal with that other than the criminal law. You know, for example, go to the internet provider and say, look, there's something malicious being put down, you know, being said, can you, you know, take down the post? Or if it's a newspaper, you can ask the newspaper to be able to, you know, to print either a correction or a, uh, a refutation you know, or a piece refuting, you know, what was said. Or, you know, you can go to the uh, press uh, arbitration committee, right? So, you know, you don't need to have this. You know, there are other ways that, that to, to go about this that are much much less restrictive on on freedom of expression. So you don't need to have this law. But like I said, they those were only two, and you know, seven said you know you need to have this system. So then, what do you think about this, Rob? Obviously, you were just uh, throwing out this is what one side said, which was victorious, and then this was what the the smaller side said, and then they ended up losing. Um, do you buy that that? This is the positive benefit of this. While even things that are true could lead to some repercussions, this would help. You know, you, you talked about suicide, or this would help um, not, you know, shaming someone. I think even the most um, supportive people for, you know, truth and transparency and stuff like that would admit that there are certainly times when people who have done questionable things and maybe should have had some more time to think before they did, you know, something or said something, um, even that being the case, they've been shamed by the internet and it's probably ruined their lives for a good amount of time, if not their entire life. Um, so do you buy that argument or is that just an interesting argument, but no? Well, I think, I mean, I think you can certainly make an argument that given the, um, the, the, the almost universal, uh, you know, high levels of internet usage in Korea and, you know, certain cultural factors that, yes, um, the, the, the potential damage from malicious, you know, commentary or, com you know, malicious postings or malicious comments, um, might be relatively high compared to elsewhere. But even in the United States, you've seen cases of cyberbullying, you've seen attempts to pass legislation against cyberbullying, um, and you know malicious online uh, behavior, but this isn't just cyberbullying. Like, you know, people got in trouble for saying what was President Park and Hay doing the day of the Say Wall, and you know, some people questioned what happened during the, the missing hours, and was she with someone that she had a romantic relationship oh, yeah. with? No, but in the states, it's like Barack Obama is a communist. He's a Muslim. You know, nothing wrong with that, but you know, he's a Muslim. He wasn't born. You know, they say horrible things about the president, and there's nothing you can do. Oh, are you saying the, the, you're saying that he's not a communist born, a Kenyan born communist? That's exactly. Well, you know, but it, but in the states, you could say those things. I, by the way, just think because people knowing my political background, I was joking. Yeah, no. See, you're you're one of those guys <laughs> who has um, some interesting beliefs every now and then, but I think you're very logical, and uh, you know. You call a spade a spade, so, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, you can say horrible things in the United States, even if if they're not true. There, there's no penalty, yeah. and you know there's some problems with that. But I, I, I don't know. This is a little iffy to me. Okay, it's more than a little iffy. I mean, I mean, like well, you asked me what I think, so I'm going to try to I'm going to try to give you as nuanced an opinion on this as I can. Um, my my nuanced opinion is yes, I understand that. There needs to be a system of combating, you know, uh, malicious behavior. That I understand. That's something that's pretty universal. Um, and yes, I, given Korea's particular cultural context, I can understand how courts would be very, very sensitive about that sort of thing. But that's not really what we're talking about here. Um, what we're, where it gets – and this is where, you know – even within the Korean, you know, legal community, this is a matter of great debate because what, you know, especially with, when you're dealing with things that are based on fact, right? Um, it's very, very difficult to ascertain intention when you say something. For example, 
Um, you know, for, for example, the thing that you said before, let's say that, you know, politician A, you say, you know, he hired a uh, prostitute or whatnot, or he was stepping out on his wife. One could argue that that has no public, you know, there's no public interest in that. Um, but you could also argue, well, he's a, you know, the public figure, you know, it's important that we know the, uh, the, per, you know, the, 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 you know, the personal character of our officials. Um, you know, so there is a public interest or actually in one particular example, in one of the uh, Korean language articles, I was reading about this. Um, let's say somebody hadn't been paid by his, uh, employer, you know, you got, I mean, let's say you run a post on some online community and say, Hey, this guy didn't pay me. Now you could be, you know, doing this for the public interest, you know, other people need to know, or you could be doing it you know, to put pressure on the employer to pay you, right? So which one is it? Um, you know, that's very difficult for anybody to know, let alone, you know, let alone the state in the, in the form of the court system. So, you know, where does criticism and where does slander begin? That's a very, very fine line. And then, you know, the court, like the, you know, the constitutional court basically said that, um, well, the term, you know, slander or libel, um, these are commonly used terms and we don't really need to explain it, but there's a lot of people, you know, w- even within the legal profession to say, yes, you do. Um, this could become very, very complicated and very, very, you know, this could become very, very murky. The other thing too, and this is a big one in Korea is that, you know, it should be pointed out Korea is not the only country with criminal, uh, criminal libel laws, but the way that it uses it often puts it up at the top at least of attention for such laws well okay that's true and i'm going to get to that in a second japan also has these criminal libel laws and the criminal the japan's criminal libel laws are somewhat similar to korea with one with one major exception and and that's um well actually before i get to that i should also say that the united states the United States doesn't have any federal criminal uh, defamation laws, but 15 states have them. But even with those 15 states that have them, um, they basically see like two or three cases a year. They basically don't use them. Um, as opposed to Korea, and in fact, actually, I mean, basically since the 1990s, Countries that had criminal defamation laws, starting in, in New Zealand, abandoned theirs in 1992. Uh, you know, going into the 2000s, many Western countries abandoned them. Uh, Germany still has theirs, but they've never thrown anybody in jail for it. Um, as I pointed out, the United States, there's 15 states that have them, and but they only use them like once or twice a year. Um, in Korea, on the other hand, um, over the last 10 years, the amount of, of of criminal defamation cases has is more than excuse me more than quadrupled. You know, it went from uh, two thousand four hundred and seventy seven in two thousand four to uh, nearly sixteen thousand in uh, two thousand thirteen. And uh, as I mentioned in the the intro to this topic, they don't even have to win, and they might not even be interested in winning. But when you pursue someone, I mean, they didn't win against the Japanese journalist who wrote things about President Park and Hay, also concerning what she was doing the day of the Sewol. They didn't win, but he wasn't allowed to leave the country. I mean, that was and that was reported by um, not only other news agencies, but that was cited by groups that were talking about the lack of free speech and freedom of the press in South Korea. So, right. I mean, it's, you know, even if you don't win a case like this, it could be, it has a very, very chilling effect on, on, on freedom of speech. I mean, heck, I mean, even when I was running the Marmosol, you know, I made it a point and it's not just the government. It's also, you know, people with power in an influence in society, it's very easy for them to misuse this law to try to silence criticism. But also when you say it's not even just the government, I believe with President Park and Hay, wasn't it not even her? It was that a group of citizens brought defamation? Okay, we're about, we're, we're about to get to that. And it's a very important point. And like I said, um, you know, um, but I mean, just to give you an example of that, that chilling effect, you know, back when I was on the Marmotol, um, you know, there was one famous case here uh, involving a particular foreign journalist who 
went into uh, went on one of the English language dailies here and wrote a satirical piece about uh, the head of uh, of a particular electronics firm here that I will not mention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gotten to us too, Rob. Yeah, go on. Right. But the fact is, on, on the Marmitzal, I, I made it a point. It's like we are not going to mention that company by name because that company clearly lacks a sense of humor. Did you did you not mention <laughs> it at all, or did you do the very Korean thing where it's like I, company I think, yeah. R? Yes. Yeah. Right. I would not. Yeah. Exactly. I would. I do it that way. But I made it a point that you know you, you don't. We're not going to mention them by name because you know the Marmitzal doesn't have a legal team. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, Robert wants to spend money on, you know, buying new cameras, not, you know, paying companies, uh, you know, or paying, uh, you know, for defamation, you know, fines or anything like that. Paying for a legal defense or something that you might even win, but you still have to pay for the legal defense. Right. It's a pain in the ass. Right. It has a very chilling effect. Um, and in fact, uh, this is the kind of law that really lends itself to soft authoritarianism you know you've seen cases you know of of presidents or you know high-ranking officials using this kind of law for example in turkey recently you know the president just uh you know somebody uh you know somebody went down for you know defaming the president you know you see it used to chilling effect here um to you you know um Donald Trump, for example, is talking about, you know, one of the things he's mentioned, one of the reasons why, again, I, I really have, you know, very deep seated reservations about Trump is uh, he, one of the things he's talked about is, is opening up the defamation law in the United States that will allow stuff like this. So, you know, it could have a very chilling effect on press freedom. We could have a very chilling effect on, on personal freedom. We've seen it here. We've seen it elsewhere. Um, now the thing you were talking about earlier, um, and this again brings me back to where, you know, where I was talking about the Japanese case, it, the Japanese law is somewhat similar to the Korean law with the exception that in Japan, the victim has to file charges. If the, if the victim, if the victim doesn't file charges, there is no case, Right. Whereas in Korea, third persons can file charges. Now, even in Korea, if the wrong victim says, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have, I don't want this case to go through, you know, you, you know, even if the person has been indicted, the, the case, the case drops. But if the, per, if the victim remains silent, then the case goes through. Right. And that's what we've seen here. Where, yeah, you saw it, for example, um, uh, the most recently was actually, and, th and this is ironic, actually, you'll, I think you'll appreciate this. And, and it actually brings something uh, that you mentioned earlier, too, which was the anti-terrorism law that got passed. Um, an opposition lawmaker who just happens to be a former, uh, a former executive at uh, Samsung Electronics. Ooh, you named the company. Ooh, my ears are perking up, Rob. Well, no, I, well, I, I'm not saying necessarily that you know, I, you know, we've ever criticized Samsung on either the Marmot Hall or here. Um, but anyway, um, a former a lawmaker who is a former executive of Samsung Electronics um, criticized um, the the, uh, the 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 terrorism prevention law. Uh, during a uh, during a party meeting, he said something that I don't, I don't really want to get into it. Which is, by the way, quite interesting. If we ever do have a podcast about the anti-terrorism law, and I suggest we do very soon, um, we'll probably talk about it. But anyway, he made some criticisms of the terrorism prevention law, and he ended up he, he ended up being uh, a a conservative what they call a conservative civic group. End up filing, you know, file, filing charges against them for defaming the 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 say ordered party. So an individual that doesn't exist, like the the type of thing in the United States where like corporations have rights too. Right, right. So he's he's now facing charges pressed by a third party. In this case, being the uh, the conservative uh, civic group, you know, for 
defaming not even a person, but defaming the you know opposition. Yeah, I say defaming the ruling party lawmakers, right? So I mean, you yeah. know, I I can't see how that's a good thing. Um, and you know, you don't even have to be a civic group. The state itself can launch charges. I mean, you know, that's 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 even that's chilling. Yeah, the fact that you don't even have to be a human being, you just, you know, you can be a party, you can be a state, you can be an, you know, you know a, a corporation, and you can still be leveling these charges. Um, yeah, that's, that's where the, a lot of abuse uh, can really creep in. And like I said, you know, it's, uh, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Um, you know, whereas in the rest of the world, these laws are either getting, you know, in the rest of the world where, uh, you know, especially within the developed world, you know, these laws are you know, gradually being uh, done away with. But in, in Korea, uh, that, you know, that those laws are, are being used more and more and more. And, uh, yeah, I just don't see that as a, a positive development. Yeah, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this law is, you know, even after you die. Oh, that's right. Yeah, after you die. Even after you die, you know. Your your body may be dead, but your but but your reputation you know continues on. Um, we obviously we saw the case of of uh, the former uh, you know national police agency uh, commissioner who um, made some remarks about the late president Noam Hyun, and yeah, it's he uh, ended up uh, doing time over that. Um, you know, even though he was, you know, making, you know, uh, admittedly, um, uh, unverifiable comments about, about a dead guy, you know, uh, yeah, your, uh, you know, the reputation, you know, you still have a right to a reputation even after you die. So, and, and once again, talking about the unique situation of Korea, um, your children, have the right to protect your reputation. Your family has the right to protect your reputation. For that matter, I mean, yeah, the state has a rep, a right, you know, a right to rep, you know, protect your, uh, you know, your reputation. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think even if you keep the criminal defamation law and look, you know, like I said, Japan has it, 15 United States, you know, 15 states in the U.S. do, do Germany has it. I mean, I think even if you argue that um, you need to have that, uh, law. I mean, I do think there's uh, a strong argument to be made that you, know, you need to change it so that you, you keep the third parties out. So we're hitting our uh, time limit here, Rob, but the final question I had for you, um, I, I sort of apologize just right off the bat because I've asked you this before and I know it's a difficult question, but looking forward into the future, um, currently uh, in South Korea, the president has one five-year term. They've been talking about changing that. And I think probably a change might be useful you know having a one term you know in itself can be destructive in some ways also five years i think is just not the the greatest uh, length of time so i wouldn't be surprised if that changed um, sometime in the future but being that president pock has the one term and after that we'll have the new president come in um, and of course you don't know which party that's going to be um, but how do you see this continuing under the POC administration and then into a possible, you know, future administration, either from uh, Ban Ki-moon or the, the Seoul mayor has been has been brought up. And there's also other contenders as well. Um, POC and Hay has, has definitely been conservative. Um, and as you mentioned, the last 10 years, this has been increasing rather than decreasing, as we've seen in other parts of the world. Um, do you see that continuing or do you think that this is perhaps something that might be more unique to President POC? Well, I mean, even looking at the numbers, I mean, the numbers have been growing steadily, you know, at least since 2004. Um, so, I mean, you know, this is this has been a trend in Korea going through several presidential administrations, not just President Park. Um, now, do I think a, a change in 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 leadership might lead to you know changes in the way that law is used, or dare I dare we dream? Um, you know, changes in the laws themselves. Currently there is a uh, bills in the national assembly trying to, trying to change the defamation laws, but they're currently, you know, held up in committee. Um, I don't see that going anywhere, but you know, 
you know, it is, you know, it, it is a matter of discussion and especially within the legal field, there's, you know, there's a lot of uh, debate about this. So, um, being an optimist, um, I like to think that over, you know, eventually, you know, you're going to see a move towards a more reasonable defamation law. I don't think you'll ever, I don't think you'll, event, I don't think you'll see the defamation law itself repealed for a long time, if ever. But I do think, you know, again, getting the third parties out um, and being, you know, crafting the law so that it's a lot less um, uh, susceptible to abuse. I do see that happening. Uh, I don't necessarily see it happening under this administration, but, you know, I do see it happening eventually. I mean, like I said, I, I, I'm an optimist, so I like to think that, you know, things eventually do move in, in the right direction. But, you know, I, I've been wrong before. And, hey, you know, you know, if Trump becomes president, we might see, uh, you know, we might see the, that this kind of defamation law work in the U.S., I, I didn't want to say anything because you're making a good point, but it was really funny when you were talking about the concerns of Trump and you talked about bringing back some defamation problems in the United States. I was like, that's a that's a legitimate concern, Rob, but that's very low on my worries about Donald Trump becoming president. I, that's actually, <laughs> I'll be honest, that's my number one concern. That's I mean, your number one concern with Donald Trump. Well, look, I mean, Donald Trump, there's a lot that's wrong with Donald Trump, um, but you know, when you start fucking around with the First Amendment, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's a major, major red flag right there. That's something that, you know, um, it, that's just unacceptable. Um, and, and, and seriously, like, I, and, and especially since I've, I've seen it at work here, I've seen it at work in other countries where, you know, this kind of defamation, you know, defamation laws become very much the tool of, uh, of soft authoritarianism. In fact, I think that was the, uh, you know, reading, I think that was a line used in a, you know, I think it was somebody in the national review, but I mean, it is a perfect way of describing it. I mean, you know, look, Korea is a democracy. I mean, even, uh, you know, the, you know, the New York times mentioned the freedom house report. Um, did you by chance, uh, read the uh, freedom house report? Yeah, I've done some, um, not reporting, but I've done some research on this in the last six months. Um, uh, I've read the Freedom House report in depth. Uh, I probably couldn't remember specific things just right offhand, but um, it has some very interesting things to say, particularly about the, the POC administration. Right. And, uh, now, it's, let's not go too far. I mean, you know, Freedom House's grading for Korea is still fairly good. I mean, it's like, you know, stuff like, you know, 10 out of 13. It's gone down slightly, but it's still fairly good. Right. But it's stuff like the defamation law. And I, they brought up the defamation law in particular in the last, was it, the 10, uh, 2015 report? It's that kind of thing that, you know, can lead to, you know, Korea is still a democracy. Look, Turkey is a democracy, right? Uh, Russia is still technically a democracy, right? But it's through imperfect laws like this that, you know, in the wrong hands, and you know, look, I'm not, nece- I'm not necessarily saying that Pocket A is the wrong set of hands, but um, he's not you know, saying that for the record. I'm not saying he's that. not saying that. But I'm saying, you know, in theory, <laughs> in the wrong set of hands, this, you know, this can, this law can be very, very chilling in the, you know, in the way in which, you know, chilling in terms of, you know, uh, public criticism of not just the government. Um, but also just those in power. Like I said, you know, the government's one thing, but it's also, you know, uh, like well, like we've seen here, where you have, like, for example, civic groups, you know, on the left and right, which will use this law to try to, you know, silence criticism, or certain companies, you know, big companies, who might use it to try to silence opposition. Um, you know, one of the articles I was reading said, look, you know, anytime you see, you know, the, any, you know, a lot of times where you have, you know, major legal disputes or major political disputes, you'll also start to see defamation laws, uh, defamation charges flying left and right because, you know, people are either trying to silence criticism or win public sympathy for, you know, their particular, you know, position or their particular uh, side. And, uh, you know, that's not what the defamation law is supposed to be for. 
right? It's not supposed to be for that, but that's what it's being used for a lot. Um, and uh, look, it's also it's also expensive. I mean, it's it's expensive for people to have to defend themselves, but it's also a major expenditure for the taxpayer, right? Because then you have the trial for this, and you know you need to do the investigations. It's a uh, yeah, that kind of that kind of money might be spent better elsewhere. Real quick before we end, then what what does that mean, Rob? Who who do you support on the conservative side of things? Then, if it's not Trump, as it as it should not be, uh, what what do you look at? Well, look, I I mean, you know, I think I've I, I said I'm kind of partial to Ruby on myself, but he's not doing particularly well. Did take Puerto Rico though. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, that's not nothing. <laughs> you know, I mean, look. Uh, you know, when you're when you're Rubio's camp, you take your good news wherever you can find it. Um, you know, Kasich, Kasich, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan, but he seems like a, an honorable guy and seems like, you know, you know, at least he seems like an adult. Yeah, um, no, and that's that's that goes far in this election cycle. Right. So out, out of the the final Cruz, group that's Cruz, still this. You know, um, I think I've said this before, too, is, you know, I actually like Trump more, uh, Trump more than I like Cruz, although I will give. Although, you know, ever since, again, ever since Trump started talking about uh, his uh, his views on, uh, on on defamation and the First Amendment, you know, uh, he, he's, you know, he I think he now he's surpassed Cruz, you know, in my on my shit list. Um, you know, what I'm worried about is I'm going to be faced with a, a choice between Trump and Cruz and, uh, you know, Trump and Cruz. And that's just, you know, not one. I, that's not a choice I want to have to make. Um, at, at, at some time I might just say, I'm not going to vote or, you know, dare I say it, you know, uh, you know, cast a vote for Clinton or, or cast a vote for, for Bernie Sanders. I don't know. Th- that I think, won't be happening. I think there's still, Th- that won't be happening. There's still a dream. I can yeah. still dream. Well, I, mean, I mean, there might be, a, there might be, I mean, yeah. I mean, Trump, yeah, Sanders might get a. You know, might get the nomination, but I won't be voting for him. That's oh, what okay. I'm All right. Well, um, <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. Might get the nomination, but I won't be voting for him. All right. Let's end yeah, it there. I mean, you know, look, uh, but anyway, I mean, yeah, it's it's an ugly situation. But like I said, that's neither. That's not very career related. All right. Well, let's uh, let's call the day, Rob. I'll let you go and we'll talk to you next week. All right. Uh, see you next week.